Hi, I'm Simon Savage. And I'm Melanie Sykes. And welcome to our book club. The book that we um, have read in the last month is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. What's it about, Simon? So the book is all about a a young woman called Vanessa who, when she's 15, she starts to have a relationship with her teacher at boarding school, Mr Strain. And we then move to, well, we go from 2000 to 2017, where he has been accused of sexually assaulting a um a student um and so it all comes to the fore and it's kind of she's almost at one point asked if she will come forward but she's clearly I don't know how to put it actually she's been so groomed I guess and genuinely thinks she was in love with him that it looks at whether she feels that there was it was consensual or not her recollection of it is that it was love and it was a relationship and she's having to re-examine that feeling and was it actually abuse and and it's it's a fascinating read actually. I don't think I realised this book would take me on such a journey emotionally, moralistically, all that. How did you find reading it? Well, the first thing that came to mind was, I think I've read something similar to this before. And it was Three Women. You know, the book Three Women. One of the storylines in that book is pretty much this novel. That was a comment that we got from some of our um, lovely book group members who said they felt that they'd seen this in Lisa Tadeo's Three Women, which is interesting because Lisa Tadeo's debut novel could be a choice for the future, who can say? Yeah. Um, And I I think it's true. I think this goes into such a deep dive of that one particular strand, though it's quite... um, I just found it incredibly... I think her writing is brilliant and it's gripping but I found it very hard to read at points and it made me feel quite sick at points, but that's the whole point of the book. Yeah, it, it, it was quite nauseating for sure. The way she writes about it, as, as Vanessa telling us her story, how did you feel as, she, as it starts off that it, it's Vanessa who's actually the one who is quite, um, she's got a crush on him instantly, but she does sort of pursue it as, she sees it as power. And, and it's something that she can pursue. I thought that was quite a, an unflinching look at it that I hadn't seen before. Yeah, the way, way I see it is that when you're in those teenage years, your, your sexuality is being ignited regardless of anybody trying to manipulate it. It's just happening. It's just happening. You also have to look at the background of her as well, is that she's a bit of a loner. She's a little bit out on her own. She's an intellectual, I guess. She's really smart. And he, it's that classic thing, isn't it? Is that somebody separate from the pack is an easy target. So he's identified that she's alone and zeroed in on her. And she's she's smart and really clever and really can connect with him on those levels. She's like the perfect victim for him in a way. And and she feels really validated by him because she's not really getting it from anywhere else either. So his choice is perfect, really. And she's just a 15 year old girl and having somebody tell her amazing things about herself. She's feeling good. She's feeling admired. She's feeling sexy. And and so that's all wrapped up in it. it it's um, it's really frightening, actually, that that and that can and does happen. Yeah. And, and I think the bit that I found particularly disturbing is that as, as we meet Vanessa, she's saying about how she has this crush and she does follow him and she does go and like check out his house and all that kind of stuff. But he has, we find Only out- once he starts, only, only once he starts giving her vibes, does she start checking him out? As it went on and you were in her mindset, you'd sort of occasionally think, oh, maybe this is a, a, a consensual relationship. And then he'd do things like, call me daddy or you're my little girl. Honestly, it made me feel, it's like I was reading it, you know, when your stomach drops. I thought that the way Kate Elizabeth Russell wrote that was really impressive. Yeah, because I think what what 
if you're writing it, you've got to, he's obviously got something wrong with him and, and his guard drops. So he's a predator and he's playing it really, really well until he can't help himself. Um, and I guess that's how these people, they can't keep that front up the whole time. So every now and again, the fact that they're a little bit twisted will come out. Did you find that she does that really well in balancing how you have those moments where you forget that she's so young and he's so old and then suddenly she I didn't. Yeah. I never I, I never forgot the the difference in age once. Um I I sort of saw it for what it was. A, a girl who's enamored with somebody that she likes and respects, but she's also a little bit confused about what's happening. That I found so hard to read. That can I do this? And then he's asking it when he's already done stuff. But then also there's the scene when I don't want to spoil it or get too graphic in this video, but um where he literally just does it. And and that's where I think she played, she wrote it so well because you would those bits still shocked me, even though I was sort of already shocked. Yeah, yeah. Well, they would do, because that's those are the brass tacks of abuse, aren't they? So the grooming is one thing, and then the actual getting to be in the moment and and do the act. It it is shocking. It's absolutely awful. And it doesn't, and, and as a and also a 15-year-old mind and your survival, um, your natural survival kicks in you have to work it out to normalise it because it's actually really shocking. I mean, when you're having consensual sex for the first time, it's, it's a bit like, oh, man. Like, you, you're, you're processing what's going on even though you absolutely want it to happen. So, so it's, it, it's kind of... It was, it's, well, it's well written for, for definite. There's a point he makes, actually, about being 15 when you're sort of at the end of... You're not at the end of being a teenager, but you feel like you're on the cusp of being grown up. And I think that, that Kate Elizabeth Russell looks at that really, really well. This is a book that I think makes us ask a lot of questions in our own head as we read, because you're asking them on behalf of Vanessa, I guess, in a way. Like, for example, there's that time when um, she knows while she's having sex with him that she doesn't want to have sex with him, and she's actually questioning if she's being raped as it's happening. Like... And then there's another point where she goes, oh, well, it wasn't rape, rape. And I just think yeah. that, again, it, it, it makes you think about it so much. And it's so, she really puts you in the mind of Vanessa at 15. But then I wonder if that's because I was so embedded in it that I was also forgetting she was 15 because I was thinking those thoughts. I was processing those thoughts in my brain, if that makes sense. As a Yeah, but I, I, I actually think it comes from, a. I think identifying her as 15 comes with what you were doing when you were 15. And I was a very young, immature 15-year-old. So, and I didn't have any relationships with boys. I, my first boyfriend when I was 17 and those two years are massive in my maturing, et cetera. So I guess my 15 year old self was that. And so I'm reading it in terms of how I was. And it's, you know, I can't imagine what it must be like to have some teacher that you admire all of a sudden telling you you're amazing, you're clever, you're you're this, you're that, and I really want to do this and that. And, you know, she, it's, it's, I, I, so I couldn't forget how innocent she would feel and also how nice it must feel to get those sorts of comments. I guess you, your barometer is how you were at 15. I was quite drunk at 15 and quite um, promiscuous at 15. So it's a different, it's a different mindset for me, but also I, I, you know, I don't want to say, oh, um, I was a man and she's a woman, because I don't, that I think is beside the point when you're that age. Um, yes. But it, but it is what we bring to a character. So I think I was kind of thinking, well, I remember feeling certain feelings that she was feeling or being open to suggestion at that age. And I think that's an area that she looks at really interesting, like how it only takes a small moment of being open to suggestion to literally blow your mind, blow your world apart and everything change. I, ju I just think she does it incredibly um, deftly. And also I just thought it was this, this question of Vanessa constantly thinking, was it love? Was it abuse? Was it not? And, and how that plays with her as the book goes on. Yeah, but I think that, I think 15 is like the perfect age for that confusion. I'm so glad that my youth very much was 
a youthful existence you know and I'm I feel really blessed about that now at the time you feel like the odd one out that you're you know you're just not keeping up with the others but actually it's it's a real blessing um but even if somebody was 15 and promiscuous does not mean that anybody can come in and abuse you but that's these abusers don't target girls like that they target girls like Vanessa one of the things that she does brilliantly is look at trauma and how trauma can suppress itself and when it chooses to reveal itself there's one point she talks about um how Vanessa will be triggered just by a flannel sheet it might not be something big in the news although the news story is pretty big and and involves her but it'll be like or if somebody compares what were the plants the leaves the red leaves if she sees those she starts to think of compliment and that bit as well it's the little tiny things as well as the huge moments and I think that's something that I hadn't seen discussed before it's it's often focused on the big trauma but not necessarily those small little moments just instantly making you think of something I mean also because it makes her think both of him and how wrong or right it was for her but also at the same time well yeah those two things uh, on one hand she loved it on one hand she didn't because there's bits where she talks about how she doesn't want to look she, at she didn't, it, it, but she didn't love the she I guess she liked the idea of it as opposed to the reality of it it seemed like you know, the idea of having a relationship and being loved. She was addicted to the feeling of being important to someone, not the actual acts and all the rest of it. No. One of the questions that we got from um, one of our viewers who was saying about um, how believable did we find the school and the teacher's responses? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is only, and this is 2001, isn't it? The abuse is set. So maybe we weren't talking about it as much then and maybe he was so valuable to the school and yeah it's interesting that she had to say it's all my fault I created a problem therefore I shall go. Um, I don't think that would happen now. No I hope it wouldn't happen now. Um, I think one thing about the time I did find the setting of the book really interesting because she does look at popular culture as you're reading on so you hear like about Britney Spears is quite a reference throughout the book and and both her as being this almost seen as Lolita will come to Lolita a little bit later maybe yes. um, but also how then she's seen as um this sort of when well then she becomes a sex symbol in a different way not in the school girl way but in the whole she has that leather phase and then there's when she shaves her head and literally is you know having a meltdown um, and I thought that in the background was actually quite a genius stroke by Kate Elizabeth Russell because it was a fictional account with factual moments thrown in that we could reference. Yeah, but actually then we sort of know now about Britney Spears' experience during that time as well. And, and, I, and I suspect, and people really know this, is like her leather phase was a record company yeah. thing for sure I think her school outfit was a record company thing from the art also, well I mean that's how this is what we're dealing with you know like this the the image of somebody is not what is going on inside it never ever really is unless we are being extremely authentic to the core which I think people are doing more and more now people are not scared of voicing their opinion about things anymore and thank goodness for it but we are talking of decades of people being manipulated being silenced um, and it's all changing. Thank God it's changing. Yeah, yeah. But going yeah. on to Lolita, did you, you've read Lolita, I'm presuming. I've never read Lolita. Oh my gosh, right, okay. Have you seen, you've seen the film with Jeremy Irons? No. You seen it. Yeah. I've not lived. <laughs> no, I mean, but it was only because I, when I got to about 30, I, um, I was thinking, do you know what, I haven't read any of the classics. I, ha- I don't, I haven't. Oh, probably late 20s, I started to read the classics and, and Lolita was one of them. And that is referenced in this book uh, as we go. Yeah. And it's because the teacher gives it to her to say, because it's it doesn't glamorise having underage sex, but it certainly wraps it up in love. I sometimes found that reference a bit heavy handed. Like, oh, you've read Lolita. He gives a Lolita. That to me seemed a bit too obvious. But also there was the whole thing when then he brings up Nabokov, is that right? Again, yeah. with that poem, which is My Dark Vanessa. And I was like, we get it. We get the reference. You don't need to keep 
I don't know. I, I found that just a bit occasionally heavy handed. Yeah, interesting, actually. It might seem out of the realms of possibility, but actually, it's a pretty smart move on his part. I didn't think it was out of the realms of possibility. I think it's when it kept happening. I think it was the fact that we had it with the Lily Eater, then we had it with Nabokov. Then she mentioned how I think Vanessa knew that Poe was writing a poem to his cousin who was 13. And I was like, okay, you're really laying on the literary heritage of this a bit thick. I don't know. It was just. But he's in English. No, no, I get you. I I get you. I I didn't. I just thought. I just thought it was quite interesting. I mean, I haven't read the my dark Vanessa poem. I just think because he was an English teacher and she was a good English student, that the book's stories I think is okay and acceptable. I it didn't. I didn't read it and think, oh, this is all a bit crowbar. And you know me, I'm always thinking, well, that was done for effect, and that was said for that reason. And you're usually not like that. (laughs) And I've switched. I've turned into Crowbar Savage. <laughs> spending so much time with Crowbar Sykes. <laughs> oh yeah, but sorry about that. A lot of the questions that we got sent from our lovely fellow book club members um, was around the likability of Vanessa. And it's something that gets my goat. Mm. Because I don't think you have to be likable to have been through horrible things. Yeah. Absolutely. And I wondered, how, how did you feel about Vanessa? Because she is a very complicated character. I felt, I, 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 my heart went out to Vanessa. Um, I, I can't believe what she'd been through. And, and really the abuse continued. And I guess that he just kept it going because he wanted to keep her sweet and wanted to keep her quiet and keep her believing. But ultimately he wasn't really interested in her. She was just great cover for any emerging stories. I just felt sorry for her. I I really did. Um, And I didn't, I I don't, yeah, like you said, I don't think you have to really dig somebody and like the personality for a book like this. It's kind of irrelevant. Um, Her experience is what is is important and how she'd um, processed it in order to survive. What did you think about the whole Henry situation? Because we should say that, I don't want to give too much away for those people who haven't watched it yet, but uh, watched it yet. <laughs> it feels cinematic. That is one thing I did. I did feel like I was watching an HBO series. Yeah. Yeah, I could absolutely visualise it for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like even when we're talking about it, I, I'm right in houses. I'm right in the schoolroom. It's just really like that, isn't it? But anyway, go on. What were you saying? Um, I was just saying, oh, um, because... So basically she does get kicked out of school. We don't see it like that as the reader, but that's how everyone else sees it. Um, And then she she ends up going to another college where she meets another tutor called Henry. And I thought his character was really interesting and multi... Every character in this book is multifaceted and flawed and all those kind of things. And actually I would say he's almost a good part of the book, but even he has a moment. Yeah, I didn't really see that coming in a way in terms of him being just a really not cool teacher. But then you find out that he married a student and actually he's favorite, he's he's sort of favoriting her a little bit. And you're like, oh no, here we go again. But I didn't know what, what did you think the point of bringing him in and doing that scenario was all about, do you think? Because uh, somebody was written to us and suggested that was that all a dream, <laughs> which I don't think it was. But like, what was it? What was the point of it? This second wave of potential another abuser. Well, yeah, because I was thinking about because it was Priya that asked that question, and I thought it was interesting the fact that I think I don't know whether we were supposed to be slightly wrong-footed by him mm-hmm. in the fact that he was so kind of, and then because then he flips at one point and says, "Well, you've come onto me so strong," and she's like. No, I haven't. I, but but I don't know whether that was supposed to throw us again, or whether he was meant to be. We were meant to read him as being a genuinely cool, lovely teacher who was interested, but took that interest a bit too far in a different way uh, when he meets Strain. Um, I couldn't quite work that out. But then I was. This is, sounds like a really lazy answer. Part of me was like, Am I meant to understand that, or is that meant to be the whole point? Am I meant to be left questioning? Not everything can be. You know, not every character or moment in a book can be neatly tied in a bow. 
Well, actually, as we're talking, I'm thinking that maybe it's just another way of showing mild, potentially abusive behaviour. Like, there's something off kilter about him Googling her and reading all these blogs. Would a teacher do that with good intention or are they just titillated by the fact that one of their students... I think anyone that does that is dodgy. You know how sometimes you'll meet people and they want to find out loads about you really, 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 really quick. I find that a bit off-putting. So I'm like, chill out. Let's just get to know each other. Like if I make a new mate, I won't say, oh, I've got a YouTube channel because I don't want them to go off and decide what they think I am from it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't Google anyone. I don't go- I've never done that. I hate the idea of it. Only and predominantly is because if you Google me, you're going to read a load of shit that's not true. So I suspect that's the same for everybody. Yeah. So I don't do it. I think the most honest ways of looking at any anybody really are looking at them on Instagram and seeing what they do. And we're starting to really see now that people are becoming more authentic on their Instagram accounts as well, because it, it creates too much pressure to be perfect. And nobody is. Chris Cairns wanted to know, what was our initial thoughts when Strain kills himself? Right, what was yours? Because I, I, I just think, yeah, go on. It sounds really weird. I'm going to say, it sounds really odd. I just felt a bit... Um, Oh, that's how literally how I felt when it happened. <laughs> oh, right. Because I didn't care for him. I kind of was a bit cross because I wanted him to get his just desserts. That's how I felt about it. But I, but overall, I think because I was so with Vanessa, although she grieved, so I. <laughs> but I did just kind of do a bit of an oh. Oh my god! So I did. I did similar. I guess I want this man to get his comeuppance, and so it was a oh no! I wanted it, the resolution of the of the book to be a little bit more of him being held accountable and getting his getting his. Yeah. And um, it was an oh no from me, <laughs> and an no oh from you. I think it was weird because because it doesn't happen because it sort of happens sort of almost two thirds of the way through, halfway through-ish, that area, it also then made me sort of, as I went on, think, not that I, how can I put it? I suppose it just made me think, well, how is this going to resolve itself full stop then? And I think that does kind of lead, and some people asked us about the ending and how we felt about the ending, because I think some people didn't find it necessarily a satisfactory ending. Why? What? Because she feels she's gone through the process. She's worked a few things out. She's sorted some issues out with her parents. She gets a dog and she, she starts getting her life back. In terms of the people not potentially being happy with the ending and it, nobody gets exposed, nobody gets their just desserts. No, Unfortunately, that is probably what's happened to lots of these That's real children. life. And that's life. Um, but I think it will. it is going to change and it will change. And these books will help that happen because they shine a light on a problem. But it is at the moment, I think it happens to people. People get away with it. People have to learn to live with it and, and get to the other side of it. But actually more needs to be done around these things. And yeah. more has been done around these things. I felt hopeful that although she was by no means sorted in any way and I hate that term that you have to be sorted but um there was there was we were left at a point where she had peace and was calm that's how I felt about it and I thought that was a really deft way of finishing the book yeah yeah uh, I'd say so because it 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 didn't it wasn't um she lived happily ever after either she just found some peace but that doesn't mean that's that's the rest of the story because childhood trauma is is in your bones and I don't know if you can ever exorcise that I, I think you can have therapy I think you can learn to live with it I think you can fill your life with things that have meaning and give you purpose but trauma it it's it's an affliction yeah and I think I think I, I just felt that ending was right for the book. It was. So I feel bad because I feel like I slated it because I was on about too much Alita. It's something that I just don't like as a trope. I don't like books where the main character is bookish or studying English literature. It's just done so much. You read a lot of books, so therefore you probably see it as a tool 
rather than storyline. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but then without that sort of storyline, we'd never have educating Rita. Oh my God, and that's amazing. And we can't have a world without educating Rita, can we? That is, that is something I fully, fully <laughs> concur with you on. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and interestingly, in that scenario, you wanted them to be a couple. I mean, they were the same age, so it was absolutely fine. So that's yeah. just different. But you kind of, you were begging for them to have a conclusion in that way, weren't you? And it just never happened, which is why it's so beautiful and bittersweet, that, that film. Yeah. So anyway. If they seen it, they need to go and see Educate Me, because also it's like a joyous antidote to this book. Yes, it is exactly that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's absolutely one of the best thing, best films ever made. Would Would you recommend it, Melanie? I would absolutely recommend this book. I think it's an extraordinary and important read. I, I can't say I enjoyed it. I'm very glad that I read it. So next up for April, we are going to be reading Nisha Dolan's Exciting Time. This book is all about Ava, who moves to Hong Kong from Dublin, where she meets a banker, I think called Jake, um, they start a relationship. He go, he travels for business. And while he's away, she meets a woman who is a lawyer who she starts to have a relationship with. So I think it's going to be quite intriguing. Get it read by April the 18th. A video should pop up around that time. But as always, Melanie, it's just been a treat. Till next month, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Bye. <laughs>